Hi, this is Denise Matthew, and I'm back again for part three, HD 101, A Beginner's Guide to Reading Your Human Design Chart. We've covered a lot of information already, and if you haven't had an opportunity to check out the first two parts, it would be worthwhile because I'm going to assume that you already know the information that I've put in those first two videos. Today, we're going to continue to try and go through the centers. Hopefully, we'll finish them, but if not, we'll stop where it feels like it's been enough information. And as I said before, if my voice is too fast because I get sort of into the moment of explaining things and I get faster and faster, then please feel free to use the YouTube playback speed because that can slow the video down, the speed down so that you can get the information that you need and not feel overwhelmed by the speed. So in part one, we did type strategy and all the profiles. In part two, we did authority and we got the first three centers done the head center the ajna and also the throat center which took quite a bit of time now today we're going to continue on and we're going to start with the identity center also called the g center so let's get right into it the g center can be called the self center the identity center it all means the same thing it's just different names for the same center when we talk about the G center it's quite an important center and i think that all centers are important in their own way but some centers just have a bigger sort of force that is present in a human design body graph or in your life. So when we talk about the G center, we're talking about a place where the identity or some people might even say where our soul resides. So you can imagine that that's an important part of any body graph or important part of who we are. It is also the place where the theoretical magnetic monopole resides. And based on human design theory, the magnetic monopole is something that draws all the things we need in life. It is only an attractor. There is no repellent. In a, or there's, it's not a repeller. So in a normal magnet, you would have a positive and a negative charge. And But with the magnetic monopole, you only have one charge, and that's an attractor. What it attracts in your life is in relationship to how you feel about yourself. And that all comes down to the G center. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the magnetic monopole right now. So if we're talking about the magnetic monopole and that it's a magnet that attracts but doesn't repel, there's some more important information to know. And that is that self-love is one of the most important things for us to attract the best things in our life. We might imagine that if we don't have love for ourselves, if we don't believe we're worthy, then the opportunities and the people that we meet and the things that happen in our lives, the things that are attracted to that energy may not necessarily be the things we want to see in our lives. So it could be people who come into our lives that don't respect us because it's almost like a reflection of the energy that we're sort of emitting with the energy of how we feel about ourselves, our identity. The magnetic monopole is all about the direction of our lives. It's all about attracting the right things, the right opportunities, the right people into our lives. But only if we believe that we deserve it. And if we don't believe we deserve it, if we don't have that love for who we are and what we can give to the world, or we're, we're confused about who we are, as in we don't, we don't know if we should love ourselves, maybe we're not good enough, or, or maybe we're not lovable, those kind of things, it, it can reflect in what comes into your life. And a lot of people who feel that they're not really worthy, unfortunately get the same kind of people showing up in their lives and the same themes repeating over and over again. And the most important thing with the G Center is to break that, that whole cycle and to start to look at yourself as someone who's worthwhile having good things come into their lives instead of somebody who isn't worthy of being loved. And just like all centers, when we talk about a defined G center, we're talking about a fixed identity or something where you feel more secure in who you are. You know more about what you like and things like that. And it really can be dependent upon the gates that are defined on your identity or the channel that connects your identity center to one of the other centers to make it defined. 
So when we're thinking about somebody with a defined identity, we go back to the whole concept that everything that we learn about being loved, because that's the center that we're talking about now, we're talking about where we feel love, lovability, we feel our soul is there, we feel this is where our life purpose is, our direction in life, things that we bring into our life. So we can imagine that if I go back to the whole concept of the first seven years of life, when we really learn what we can count on, who we can trust, who can love us and who doesn't love us? Do we? Did we feel like we were supported? Did we feel like we were good enough? Did we feel like any of those things? So those are the kind of things that are going to be fixed in who you are. So the identity that you sort of construct and that becomes more fixed in its expression is an identity that was learned, was imprinted when you were, you know, in the first years of your life. So was it a good positive experience or was it an experience where you just didn't know from day to day what life was going to bring? So these are the things that you imprint and then it becomes a fixed identity. So when you get older and you look at life through the lens that you learned life, then sometimes you there's there's less of an ability to change that perspective of this whole lovability thing. If you felt that when you were young, nothing you did was good enough, you were never loved in for who you were. So that's what you learned. And so when we're coming back to this whole concept of, okay, let's get into this idea of bringing new energy. So when we talk about a fixed or defined center, we're talking about a center that we already have like all these files of, you know, this is what I learned and this is my file folder. And when this situation happens in my life, then I pull this file for folder out and this is how I cope with it. So that's kind of what a fixed energy is in, in a defined center. So if somebody said, okay, well, when I was a kid, you know, I felt disempowered because I had the gate 10 and, and I didn't, I didn't feel that any people would take that power away from me. They would make me feel small. And so I made them feel small because I didn't want to feel small anymore. So you can take these energies and you can sort of push it out into the world in a way where you are giving out what you've learned. So that's why when we look at our behaviors and we look at what we're bringing into our lives and we look at the patterns and cycles that keep coming over and over, we can start to communicate with the there are inside our soul and say okay what do i really want in my life what do i deserve and am i lovable and those kind of questions to yourself are the ones that are going to shift that perspective and where you can start to take the slow journey because it's never going to be fast to to just completely change you know how you're hardwired because literally you've been hardwired from a, you know time as a as as for the first 7 years of your life or or in a after or you know based on who you are so then we look at it and say can we draw something better into our lives can we become that person that feels that they are worthy that person that they feels that they are loved and to truly believe that within their, your being to know that that's the truth and not just you know not just say the words but to continue to start to bring in new experiences, new file folders that you can have for your for your whole list of how the world interacts with me and what I what I bring to myself. So that's the most important thing with somebody with a defined identity that even if they don't feel like the experiences of their life are bringing them the highest and the best for them, what they feel, you know, they deserve and what they want. Then it's about shifting the energy and deciding what you want in your life. Where where do you want to go with your life? What do you want to show the world? What part of love do you want to give to the world? And a lot of times, like I said, it will be related to the gates. Somebody with a fixed identity usually has more of an idea. And this is not always the case because there's energy all throughout the chart. But if we say all things being equal, somebody with a defined identity can go to an all you can eat buffet and they'll only pick the things they they know they like okay i like this so i'm going to take this and i'm going to take this and i'm going to take that and the other things that i know i like so you already come in with this sort of feeling of what you like and you want to go and get what you like and so there's more of a fixed way of of being when it comes to 
having that direction to go, okay, this is the career I want to have. And there could potentially be this ability to say, okay, this is a career I want to have and I want to have this career for the rest of my life. And I can, I can honestly th see that myself being in this career. Of course, there's an evolution to everything. It doesn't mean you have to do the exact same job and, and never change it. Although some people will, some people will be very happy to do the exact same job, to do, have the exact same meal and, and those types of things. I mean, there's other energy that would, would make it so somebody liked the routines that much. But the end product is that most people with a fixed identity, you know, they know what they want, they know what they like, and they basically go for it. Now, when you have an open G center or open identity, it's, it's actually quite a bit different from having a defined or fixed identity. For instance, if somebody has an open identity, it's really important that they are comfortable wherever they go. In other words, they need to have you need to have a place where you live that you feel comfortable. You need to go to a restaurant and have a place, you know, a table that makes you feel good, that you're not feeling like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it feels weird or it feels uncomfortable or that kind of thing. You need to have a job that makes you feel good in that job or you're happy to be there. Because what happens is if you have an open identity and you're not feeling comfortable in your space and generally you're not going to attract the best parts of of life that are going to come into your life so if you go to a restaurant and you have a table that you don't feel comfortable in and you don't feel like you're you know it, it, it's just too loud or it's too close to you know people where you're bumping getting bumped all the time generally what will happen is you won't get good food or th your perception of the food won't be good so it's it's a general kind of expression of the way you feel is what you get reflected back in your experience. So that's why it's so important for somebody with an open G center or an open identity to have the right place to live, to arrange the furniture that they like in the, you know, in the way that they like it, to have a, a space where they feel like they're comfortable. Because if they don't, it, like I said, it will change their whole direction of what they're bringing into their life. The other thing about somebody with an open identity is this whole concept of just having, and we just talked about it with a defined identity, this concept of being able to do one job and be happy with that job and kind of stick with that job for the rest of your life and, and not really feel that that's something that's bad or doesn't feel good to you. Somebody with an open identity, is it's very uncommon for them to be able to stick to just one job. So in other words, they almost not, like if you're if you have a job where you need to work and you need to bring the money in and it's something that that's okay you're okay with it you're happy with it to a degree but you just feel there's a longing to do something else so it could be that you want to create something so you have a side hustle or some people will have two or three jobs that they do at the same time and they get a little bit of money from all the different jobs because that's that's what makes them feel good but in the society that we live in it is not considered a good thing to have this whole this whole changeability to to shift up what you're going to do with your life to suddenly decide at 30 that you don't like the job you've been doing for your whole life and you want to do something different and so people will say well what's wrong with you and a lot of times even the starting block and when you're younger and you don't know because you're so worried that you're going to be pigeonholed and and told okay this is where you're going to be for the rest of your life and somebody with an open identity it's like it's like the kiss of death to imagine that you can't change you can't move from this particular job you're gonna be in this job so if you if you pick the wrong place to be then that's where you're gonna be for the rest of your life so that's why it's important to know that there is changeability there is fluidity in this center and there's this ability to do more things to change jobs to have many jobs in your lifetime to do a bunch of different things and people will go wow how do you do so many different things well that's because you were drawn to it you're checking it out. You're figuring out what you don't like by trying it. That's how people with an open open identity find out things. They figure out what they don't like by trying it. And then they figure out what they love by trying it. So it's this whole trial of getting out there, checking things out, feeling what it feels like. Does this feel good for me? No. Then move on to something else. Does this feel good? Yes, this feels good. So you're imprinting yourself. You're also going to potentially and usually it's when you're younger you're going to be potentially influenced by people with fixed identities and they're going to have more of a d direct influence on you on your direction in life so when when people are young and they get in with the 
people that maybe are not necessarily the right people for them, people that, you know, maybe are, are doing things illegal and, and you have this someone who's, you know, got an open identity and they're completely involved doing things that everybody else can't understand why this person is doing it because that doesn't feel like that's them. But it's just this influence that can kind of take them away and then, you know, they eventually realize when they get out of the aura of these people that maybe that's not exactly where they want to be. So there's this whole imprinting and this energy of being with other people and feeling other people's energy. And when, when you are with somebody, so say you have a fixed identity or you have a defined G center and you're talking or you're with somebody who has an open G center you have to think about that that person with the open g center as a reflection of your identity and so there might be things that somebody with a fixed identity doesn't like about that other person and and their 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 personality or their whatever and that could be almost a reflection of the the person's g center so you know those are the kinds of things i mean the the person who has an open g center is a reflection of personalities. They're a reflection of identities. And not only that, a person with an open G center or an open identity can actually feel the soul of other people. So when you have an open identity, you might have friend friend groups that look completely unusual, or they might look like uh, somebody that, you know, maybe you, you grew up in a certain place and you, you know, tattoos were not a big thing, but then you you have a bunch of friends who have tattoos, who, who do things that you were never ever exposed to, but you're, you're connecting with their soul energy and you're not looking at how they're dressed, where they live, those types of things. I mean, you're connecting with their actual soul so you can see or feel what that person really is all about. And you could have somebody who, who looks all dressed up and, and they look amazing. And from the outside looking, looking in, they look like, you know, they're, they're reputable. They're the type of person that is, is up, upstanding. But then in reality, when you connect with that person, you may not like that energy. And you may say, no, that's, that person just doesn't feel good. There's something off. And nine out of 10 times, that initial hit you get from somebody when you meet them, and that's usually somebody with a fixed identity or a defined uh, identity, you're going to get the true person. You're going to get the truth of that person, the true soul energy. And if you like it, then that's good. But if you don't, there's this whole honoring of how you feel. And if you honor how you feel, then the potential chance of you getting in a situation where you actually figure somebody out and they're nothing like you expect them to expected them to be will be less likely. The other thing about the open identity is because the energy is fluid that there can be lovability issues as well because you also have to look at the concept of this inability to just say, yeah, I'm going to do this with the rest of my life. This is exactly what I want to do. This is, you know, I'm not going to change from this thing. And people might think, oh, well, why are you changing that job? Or why are you doing this? And then, and then they, when, when those questions are asked, somebody with an open identity might wonder, is there something wrong with me? Can I not do things right? And so there could be a lot of these questions about who they really are and what they really want in life. And this pressure because the world is all about pressuring people to figure things out, get it done, understand, move on, get into the next stage of your life, do what you're meant to do. And there's this pressure to be something and do something. And then it can make you feel like there's something wrong with you. And, and that's ultimately the bottom line, because then you get this issue with it's not normal to have more than one job. It's not normal to want to do more than one thing. It's not normal to want to change careers, but in fact, it actually is completely and utterly normal. So if we're talking about somebody who has an open identity in an analogy, we could imagine that somebody goes out to a store and they buy 10 different flavors of a particular candy that they like. Now, somebody with an open identity will go and open every single one of those candies, most nine out of 10 times, and they'll taste a little bit of all those candies. Somebody with a defined identity will go in and say, I like this candy and this candy, and they'll just eat those two particular candies. And, they, and they'll have no, no problem with waiting to open the other candies. They don't care about the other candies because they know that they like these candies. So that's the kind of way that the life is lived. And when you can understand that there's nothing wrong with 
with expressing yourself in a different way. There's nothing wrong with liking different things. There's nothing wrong with changing the direction. And, you know, as you find out more about what you like in your life, you're going to be more drawn to it. You're going to go, yeah, I like that. I like that career. I like when I do that particular career, but I also like when I do that. And so the thing about it is, is sometimes the energy can be so, so spread out that, there's there's absolutely no focus in anywhere and this is where there's this aimlessly going through life and not really you know settling into one job or or one something and and it's not about this whole concept of settling into one okay maybe it's settling into two maybe it's settling into three but then if it gets too spread then you have to bring all that energy back in you have to have the energy at least focused in some areas you can't have it just fo you can have it focused in in a multitude of areas but most people will end up feeling that they're just not really getting what they want out of out of the careers that they're doing because there's just too spread out they're not putting enough in it they're 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 not able to really make something of themselves with what they're doing so so picking a few things instead of like 10 things will help a person with an open identity figure out what they want to do and be happy knowing that they can do more than one thing and not feeling like they're pigeonholed for the rest of their life based on a choice that they made because they were trying to figure out what they liked and what they didn't like. So I have further on as we get, I have a list with keywords for every different gate, but for now I'll just quickly go through the different gates of the G Center and how they can have an expression through your identity. So if we think about the gate one, that's an individual energy and it really is all, all about creating and bringing a contribution to the world. And usually this contribution or what you want to bring to the world is in some way going to change the world. And, and it kind of matters you to you that it does change it, but it is bringing your unique brand of what you can bring to the table. And that's how you do it. It's your unique brand. It's usually creative and it's usually something that's not done before. And so it's a, what we consider a mutative energy. The gate two is all about the direction we find in our life and how we find our direction in life. That's where the magnetic monopole is uh, said to exist. So it even talks more about this attraction and directing us where we want to go in our life and bring what, what we're bringing into our life that make us get on our path and, and you know, in the flow of our, our destiny. We also have the gate 13, which is all about listening energy, but this is also transformative energy where we listen to the stories of people and through their stories, we recognize who they are and we also allow them to and almost give a direction or help them transform into something that they want to go or the place they want to go. So it's it's all about listening. And when you've listened to the stories and you are also providing somebody with basically a sounding board so that they can be heard and understood and able to articulate what they have to say and that that can be very cleansing just to be able to get the stories out the gate seven is all about the army and this is con uh, connected to the gate 31 which is called democratic leadership the army is also about this whole idea of of working as a as a team working together and there's a reason for it in that you're you're working together because you know that it's for the good of 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 the community it's the good for the good of everybody so you're all working it's like it's like having a beehive where all the drones are always taking care of the the hive and they're taking care of the queen because they know that when the queen is taking care of the rest of the of the whole hive is going to thrive so it's more of that type of energy the gate 10 is all about empowering or not it's all about making people feel good or making people feel not good about themselves and so you know it, it is really a powerful gate and i have a whole video on that so if you want to check that out you can it is all about self-love as well the gate 25 is the love of spirit and this is also an innocence to want to see the world as a place of love and and positivity sometimes and you could actually start out with with being in life in that way and then a few a few experiences make you change your perspectives it is connected to the gate 51 which, which is called the channel of the shaman so it means that shocking experiences can come into your life or shocking people can come into your life because if it's a hanging gate because it's an electromagnetic and and that energy is drawn to complete the channel and that could mean that because of these people your your way of looking at the world can change dramatically 
the gate 46 is called the gate of body and soul can also be called the love of the flesh and ultimately what what the gate 46 is all about is just saying that we are souls in a body and that we should treat our body as well as we treat our soul so it's 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 a spiritual connection between body and soul and a lot of people who have this energy uh, are people who will basically really care about how their body looks and how it feels they they might like to get into yoga or some movement d dance things like that because this whole caring for the body is, is is very important and the gate 15 is all about the energy of humanity it is also the energy of extremes so there could be some extremes in behavior based on this as in you you might have a lot of changes in how you run your day and a lot of changes in in what you're doing and it, there can be a connection with environmentalism with this energy as well so that's pretty much everything about the g center so let's go on to the will center and the will center is the center that as expected is all about willpower and if you have a defined will then that means you actually have the expression of willpower so the defined will it, it there's not a lot of people who have it i think it's one eighth of the population have a defined will so we're talking about people that are not common with a defined will center so the thing about the will center is it is really connected to abundance it is connected to bringing in money it's connected to how we bring in money and it is about material items and it can also be uh, you know there is there is a lot of materialistic aspects of it because you know it's all about bringing the resources to the tribe but then you also have this one energy which is the gate 51 which is all about these shocking changes that or, or experiences that happen in our life that sort of bring us closer to this meaning of you know what what's our purpose in life it's called it's half of the gate of the shaman which i just talked about when i talked about the g center and it, it is about this you know shocking experiences that change your whole perspective on life and, and a lot of times will will put you on a new direction so in the middle of all the the energy which is all tribal energy and about getting resources we have this one individual energy that kind of shakes the whole ground and it's it's a different type of um willpower that comes through the 51 it is really more of an energy of being having the willpower to endure the shocks that come in your life the thing about the will center is that it's a work to rest center which means that when you have a defined will center it means that you you can get a lot of work done a lot more work that done than the average person who doesn't have a will center defined and because of this you are expending a lot of energy and you can almost go and many times you can go way beyond your capabilities to actually burn yourself out so the whole thing about the will center is it, it is called work to rest which means you work for a period of time and then you have to take a rest and if you don't take a rest when you worked for a particular amount of time what will usually happen is you will have a rest you know programmed into your life and that will be you might get sick or you might have issues at your work or you might have um, things that will stop you from actually you know progressing or, or continuing to move forward uh, with the energy of the will center so that's what it's pretty much about when it's a defined will we'll get a little bit more into it in just a minute so let's get on to the next part of the defined and the undefined will another thing about having a defined will is that when you have a defined will you are have a, an energy that you're giving off that is is sort of an empowering energy in in fact that willpower that that ex, is exuded from you um or that you you have you know within your being is literally it's making other fe people feel like they have willpower too and they can get the things done and and it's a real can do attitude so a lot of people who are inspirational speakers or people who are motivational pe uh, speakers things like that are people who have defined will like tony robbins has a defined will you'll see a lot of people in leadership uh, positions with a defined will so for instance say you go into a job interview and you have a defined will and somebody else comes in after you and they have the same credentials as you but they don't have a defined will a lot of times it might work to your advantage that you will get the job over the other person because of this energy of this can do I can do the job I am fit for the job and you know basically you can just hire me and 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 everything will work out the thing about this energy is that even if you're not thinking about it even if you're not trying there is a level of competition 
competition that your the energy is is sort of shooting off and saying I'm competitive although you may not even feel that way but because of the energy people might be in competition with you even if you're not like trying to compete with them at all it's not even the first thing in your mind so it's something important to know is that that's the case someone with a defined will against somebody who doesn't have a defined will is is usually going to exude their will and and it's really hard to go against somebody who has kind of set their teeth on something who's got willpower it's like they will they will most 99 percent of the time win whatever battle because the battle of wills will always be won with somebody by somebody with a defined will so there's a lot of power in this energy but the whole point of it is to actually use this energy in the way that is actually for the benefit of everybody and and that's the energy that's in this in in this will center i mean the gate 26 is all about the greater good the win-win for everybody kind of energy i'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute so let's talk about the undefined will now the undefined will are people who um based on on the human design if it's you're not meant to actually make commitments and you're not meant to say i will do this i will do you know like get this done for you at this particular time so what happens is a lot of times you'll want to do something and you may not be able to do it because you don't have the willpower to will something into being or will yourself to do it you, you know you have this this capability and and there's a limit on it and there's only so much you can do so instead of actually saying i will do that and i won't you know i whatever you could say i my intention is to get this done and so it takes this onus of this pressure to have these things done or to to will yourself through things because because of the will center and being undefined there can be um stomach issues and 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 th those kind of type of health issues that can show up in your life if you're trying to make yourself have willpower when you actually don't have it so there it's it, it's important to do that the other thing about having an open will center is unlike somebody who has a defined will center who a lot of times will know their value who a lot of times know that you know what they can bring to the table uh, they like the to be paid well for what they're what they're doing and that's not always good, the case again it's all things being equal energy is it's this is only one part of a whole chart but somebody with an open or undefined will center is is going to be undervaluing what they have to bring to the table they'll say i don't need money i it's not important for me to take money a lot of times unless they've been conditioned by somebody with a defined will who's who's basically said you know the energy has said that you you deserve to be paid and you deserve to be paid well and, and in that case well those are good good qualities to have so it's about undervaluing yourself not thinking that you have as much value as as other people so the most important thing is to you know to understand your value to understand your worth to know where what you can bring to the table to have an intention to bring things to the table but not necessarily say i will do stuff like that or you know or pressure yourself to do things and to understand that you're you deserve to be paid just as much as anybody else based on what you do in your life and knowing that that money is important as well because there can be this this disconnect with not caring as much about money like the material aspect of things again all things being equal this is not always the case there could be other places where you know you 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 really want to have that that um you know reward for your and it could be based on the gates that are defined on the will and we'll talk about those right now So we talked about the gate uh, 51, which is a gate of shock, and this is the, the willpower to, to get through the shocking experiences that bring you closer to spirit. We have the gate 21, which is all about control. Now this can be about somebody who likes to control just about everything in their life. It is part of uh, half the channel of the 4521, which is all about resources. And the 45 is actually, it would be kind of like a king or queen energy. And the 45 is all about, you know, giving the the food and and whatever it, it's like a king or queen energy where the king or queen is is the one that gives all the food out but then the 21 is the is the energy of the treasurer or the or the the energy of somebody who's making sure that there is enough for all the people to have their money so there could be control with money and the other in the 45 is all about spending they'd like to spend and and the 21 like to control the gate 40 is all about 
knowing when to give to people and knowing when to give more, give back to yourself to actually know when to keep enough for yourself, this whole energy of that. It is connected to the 4037 channel, which is all about the family. It is all about getting together. It's all about sharing meals. And it is all about feeling, um, needing to be alone at some point. I mean, this is one of the alone gates or a gate where you just need to have some space and time to be alone when you need it so you can recharge your batteries. The gate 26 is all about the greater good. It's all about having or it's sales energy and you can be a wonderful sales person, but it could also be a snake oil salesman um, or salesperson because, you know, you're selling just because you want to get the money for yourself. The whole highest expression of this energy is to have a sale or to sell items or sell um, ideas or sell concepts in a way that everybody is winning and, and it's not just a one-sided kind of uh, thing that's happening. So that is all I have to say for the will center. Let us go on to the solar plexus or the emotional center. And now we arrive at another big center, which has a lot of things to talk about. But because I did a whole series on the energy of emotion, it's all about every different wavelength. It's all about the solar plexus. It's all about the emotional center when it's defined or undefined, I'm not going to get really heavy duty into this. And so I'm going to just refer anybody who wants more information on the whole energy of the solar plexus, the emotional center to, to check out that whole series, because I've pretty much talked about every single thing to have to do with the solar plexus. But as I talked about before, and I did talk about it in the authority, it, it is all about this concept of when you have a defined emotional center, you do have what's called an emotional wave. The emotional wave is something that comes in an oscillation just check back on when I talked about the authority of how it goes up and down and how you feel. So it's the highs of your life and then the lows of your life and every channel that is, it comes out of the emotional center has a different type of wavelength. It has a different type of the way it cycles through the energy of how you feel. When someone has a defined emotional center, it means that there is a channel connecting the emotional center to one of four specific centers, which are the will, the sacral, the root, or the throat. In fact, the emotional center is also a motor. So in that way, in human design, if you have a defined emotional center, it's always going to be motorized or energized, and you will have what's called an emotional wave. There are seven different channels that can define a solar plexus. They consist of two individual waves, two collective waves, and three tribal waves. We'll talk a little bit more about what they mean in just a minute. To be emotionally defined, you only need to have one channel defined. But in reality, you can have more than one channel defined. In fact, you can have almost all channels defined. And in this way, how you experience emotion is completely unique to your individual body graph. Tribal waves may be considered a quieter wave since they can simmer in the background until they're activated or triggered. And when they are, they certainly make their presence known. Tribal energy is all about family or who you consider to be your people. These people can be biological connections or connections that you made with individuals who feel a lot like you. They may like what you like, believe what you believe, and in some way they feel as if they're your people. Tribal energy comes in many different forms, from parent-child, close partnerships, and also relationships. The one theme that's common in all of these relationships is that there is a sense of bonding with another individual or individuals. Tribal energy is a type of energy that allows humanity to continue on. There is energy for sex, reproduction, nurturing, feeding, defense, and even war. It's my people against your people, and in that way, it can be powerful and sometimes out of control. The question with tribal energy can be, what am I willing to do for the people I love? Both the collective emotional wave and the individual waves are quite different than the tribal waves because neither of these waves need a trigger and instead have a pattern that is less about what's happening outside of them and more about the wave cycling through without any need from outside influence. The collective emotional waves are the 3536 and the 4130. Collective emotional waves rise slowly like trekking up a mountain, and when it gets to the top, it drops dramatically, as if there's a zip line that takes you back to the bottom of the mountain in a few minutes. Then there's a short period of just hanging out at the bottom for a little while, and then you begin the slow trek up to the top, and the cycle repeats itself again. Because of the dramatic dip from the top to the bottom of the wave, there can be a time of being high when you reach the crest of the wave that's followed by a time of being low. But because the wave begins the upward climb quite quickly, based on your unique wave, 
It could be a day where you slowly get better as the day goes on, or even a couple of days that slowly improve. There's always going to be some level of intensity with these waves. For instance, the gate 30 is part of the channel 4130, so it comes with a level of intensity. In fact, it's called the gate of clinging fire or holding on to ideas, sometimes even to the level of obsession. The gate 36 is part of the channel 3536 and has chaos in its design, since the gate 36 is a gate of chaos. There can be a lot of boredom in this channel with a need for adventure. So both of these channels, though they are considered collective with a slow rise and a quick drop and then a slow rise again, it still means that there can be some intensity with the emotional wave that people who have these waves experience. But the difference between somebody who carries a collective wave or an individual wave is a collective wave is pretty transient and quick, whereas the individual wave has potential to last a little bit longer on one or both sides. The individual waves are the 1222 and the 3955 and are considered to have inherently within them some of the most creative energy in the human design body graph. Both waves come with what are considered high highs and low lows and are the waves that some people consider big waves. What that means is that when someone is on the high side of their wave, they can be intensely joyful and excited and just as easily on the low side of their wave, they can be despondent to the point of depression. And when someone is experiencing the low part of the wave, a question that invariably comes up is, why do I feel this way? Since an individual wave isn't necessarily influenced by the outside world and moves to its own rhythm, explaining why you feel the way you do can be a difficult task. This inability to explain why you feel the way you do can leave you more depressed as a question about why you can't just snap out of it, both by yourself and other people, becomes part of your lives. This questioning of your feelings can also potentially serve to lengthen the period of the low as well, to the point where the low part, instead of lasting a few days, can last up to a week or two. That's why it's so important for someone with an individual wave to understand how they operate and to understand that their moods will shift up and down and that the shifts are a normal part of their lives. And also finding techniques that will help you through both the highs and lows of your emotional wave. Activity, creative expression, or just being away from people might be the best medicine for somebody on the low part of their wave. But only after we accept our unique configuration and see how we operate can we fully embrace our individuality. A lot of people talk about being an empath, but in human design, the true empaths are the people who have open emotional centers. An empath is considered someone who can actually feel the emotions of others. So for this reason, when you have an open emotional center, you can feel more peaceful away from the fray of life and equally swept away by emotions when you're in a crowd. And not only can you absorb emotional energy, but like any other open center, when you take in that energy around you, you can also amplify it like high definition speakers on a stereo. And for this reason, people who are undefined emotionally may consider themselves to be highly emotional or deep feelers. And while that may feel like that's the case, sometimes when you start to learn the difference between your energy and the energy of those around you, you might start to feel a little differently about how you process things emotionally. Depending on the emotions of those around you, having an open emotional center can be considered positive or challenging. Riding a wave of elation may feel amazing, but the opposite can be true. When you come in contact with a lot of toxic or negative emotional energy, and it descends like a black fog all around you. Highs and lows are part of normal life, but by understanding your unique configuration, you can begin to navigate your emotions and get a feel for what's yours and what's not yours. When you understand how you operate, you can allow yourself to be emotionally triggered by people, or alternately, you can unhook from the things that in the big scheme of life don't impact you. One of the most common misconceptions about people with an open emotional center is that they don't have feelings of their own. While in theory that may feel like it's true, we have to remember that emotional energy is absorbed and begins as one type of energy, but when it's absorbed by a person with an open solar plexus, it becomes more personal to them and is unique to their configuration, meaning their gates. The gates or hanging gates, also called half a channel, can give the emotional energy that you absorb a personal flavor. So based on the gates you have defined, you might have a more fixed way of experiencing the emotional energy from those around you. It doesn't constitute an emotional wave where there's a definite pattern of emotion, but instead can be a reaction to the emotional energy that you find all around you. And that's why it's important to know what's yours and what is in yours. So you can ride the emotional waves you want to and unhook from all the rest. 
With that being said, there are a few more details about having an open emotional center that can be crucial for getting the best emotional experience possible. One is that the emotional center can be like a sponge, soaking up emotional energy until you're beyond saturated. So it's important to wring out your sponge and come back to natural state whenever you can. Based on theory, the way that this is done is by being alone and lying down for about 15 to 20 minutes so you can dispel the energy. And since human design is all about experimentation and finding out what works for you, it's important to discover what works best for you. Some people might use yoga, meditation, or physical activity to release the energy. No way is right or wrong, and whatever method you use depends on your own needs. When you find the best method or methods for you, then you can add another tool to your self-discovery tool belt, and it will be one more way that you can understand your unique way of being. Now that we have an idea on how an emotional center works when it's defined or when it's open, let's just quickly go through the gates so that we can just talk about those. So we have the gate six on the emotional center and that is the gate of resolution or resolve. Somebody who carries this energy might be able to be a very good negotiator in that they can find a common ground in places. This is the energy of war or peace. This is all about tribal energy and it's all about caring for your family. This is the, the place that people will go to the lengths they need to go so that they can protect their family. We have the gate 37 as well. The gate 37 is part of the gate, the channel 3740. And this is all about family energy and about being together. There's a sweetness in this energy and a kindness as well. When you carry this energy, a lot of times you just want to have peace and you don't want to get into conflicts. And if people are pushing you or pulling you into conflicts, you might disappear. The gate 22 is all about grace. This is all about the individual energy and it is involved in the 1222 wave and that's all about individual energy. As I said, it's very creative. There is a grace in this energy and people who have the gate 22 are very graceful in the way they move their bodies. They could be graceful dancers. Just the way they walk can be at some level of grace. Gate 36 is all about chaos and crisis resolution. It could be jumping into chaos just because they, they're bored, you're bored, or it could also be this idea of jumping into chaos to try and make order of it. That's the high expression of it. This can also be the energy of always imagining that everybody has a better life than you are. Things are better on the other side. They call it the grass is always greener kind of concept. The gate 30 is all about intensity and holding on to ideas so that the fantasy that you have or the dream that you have can be brought into reality. This energy can burn people out or you can burn yourself out by by just having just too much intensity. The gate 55 is all about abundance. It is about the abundance of spirit and also this concept that if we truly believe in a higher purpose or an, uh, uh, something that's bigger than us, we will be supported and provided for in our lives. People who have this energy really have to surrender to the energy and understand that they may not have a lot of control in their life and that the path will usually be shown to them as they go along. And when they release the, the need to have the reins and see what the universe has to show, usually that makes for a better experience in life. Other than that, you could be tripping up, up a lot on this concept of trying to control things, trying to hoard things trying to you know grab whatever you can instead of just allowing the universe to show you what what it wants to show you the gate 49 is a gate of re revolution it is again about this concept of revolting or it could be also the energy of somebody who comes in with a very revolutionary idea who wants to change the way everybody thinks elon musk is somebody who has this energy it can be far-reaching concepts new ideas and and ways of doing things that have never been done before Somebody with this energy may decide that they're just going to leave somebody who's being intense or if they've had enough of something or someone, they can just walk out the door and never look back again. So let's move on to the spleen. So when we talk about the spleen, we're really talking about a center that's considered very primal and it is all about survival and the now. So anything that happens in the spleen is about in that moment. It is a type of intuition that we get, but it's an intuition that comes with some level of fear because, because again, it is something that is uh, more primal, more survival based. The other thing that it talks about is our health and it talks about if we're well, if we're if something's happening with our body, some something that's happening that's making us not feel well. The other thing that it does is that it keeps us on time. This energy is all about being on time. When the the spleen is defined, it's about being on time and being being where you need to be at the right time. When it's undefined, there could be problems with time, not being able to be on time, not really having the concept of how long things take. So a lot of times when somebody has an open or undefined spleen, then they may not really understand the concept of how 
how long things take to, to actually happen. So for instance, if if you wanted to run an errand, you might think it's going to take 10 minutes, but in reality, it's more like an hour. But for you in your mind, it could be like, yes, it's only about 10 minutes. So the thing about the energy of the spleen is really the gates that are defined are the ones that are going to be important. They're the ones that are going to tell you where your fears are. And it will also help you detect, you know, based on if it's defined or undefined, will help you detect about your intuition as well as the fears that you have that are deep inside of you. So let's talk a little bit more about the differences between the defined and the undefined. So when you have a defined spleen, you have a more fixed way of understanding your intuition, a more fixed way of understanding your health and a more fixed way of, of understanding time. So generally when you have a defined spleen, you can be on time. You don't have as much of a, a disconnect with how long things take or there's not this need to be too early or too late. Receiving your intuition or your information about your intuition or the the energy of, like I said, the intuition of the of the spleen in a more predictable way so that you know more about, you know, how, how your intuition works. Most people could say that they have a specific way of intuiting and it's, it's related to the gates that, that are defined on the uh, spleen. The other thing is, is your health awareness. Sometimes you can actually be aware of your health, but because the spleen can be sort of ignored, you can sometimes go beyond your health and issues because you're not going to be usually impacted as, as much by those signs that your health might be off as somebody with an open spleen. Now, when we talk about somebody with an open spleen, we have this concept that somebody could be holding on to things longer. They could hold on to fears longer. The fears could even be bigger because everything about any open center is all, all about the energy coming in and being amplified. So if there's fears within the spleen, which there will be because there's always going to be some level of fear in the spleen, although some people have no gates defined in the spleen and so that you could say that they were fearless or you could also say they're, they have fear about everything. You could also say somebody who has a completely open spleen without any gates on it, uh, sometimes they can have extremely good health and not get sick very often, and, but sometimes they can be sick almost all the time. Somebody with an undefined spleen could be what's considered a medical intuitive. So what they can do is they can read the health of other people. They can almost read the health of other people more than themselves. So in other words, you could be out shopping and with an open spleen and then come home and then start feeling a little bit sick, but it could be the energy that you sort of absorb this whole energy of all the, the open centers are absorbing energy and it's something that they have for a little while and it goes away. So you might have this feeling that you're getting sick or something's wrong with your body, but then maybe when you release the energy by laying down or something like that, you'll start to feel better. So there is a lot of intuition and a lot of sensibility about something that doesn't feel good in the bodies. And the thing about somebody with an open spleen is that they may be feel, might feel very comfortable in the, in the aura of somebody with a defined spleen because there is some level of comfort that comes with it, with being in the defined spleen. So because of that, somebody with an open spleen may be stay in a relationship that's a little bit longer than it should be as in it's not a healthy relationship for them but they may stay in that healthy that unhealthy relationship because they feel that comfort from somebody with a defined spleen so sometimes it's hard to sort of come out of that that relationship because there's that issue with coming away from that 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 feel of comfort that they get from somebody with a defined spleen and the energy of the spleen and the intuition of the spleen usually comes in a quick little blip and it's it's fast and it's it's in the now. Fears that come into the, the um, spleen, I'll talk about the fears in just a minute, exactly what they are, but the fears of the spleen are all about fears that can actually be pushed through. So there's these fears that we have in our in our body graph or, or, or who we are right. of certain things. But when it comes to the splenic fears, the splenic fears are the only place where you can just push through those fears and every time you do, it gets a little easier and a little easier. So it's one of those things that the more you work on these splenic fears, the better you feel in the long run and you can actually overcome these fears. So it's a good thing to try and try and work through the fears if you can. And again, it's all about just pushing through it and um, every time you do it gets a little easier and I do have one whole video talking about all the fears of the spleen called the fear gates and if you want to check that out I'll leave the link below if you want more information so let's do a brief discussion of the spleen gates and what they what kind of fears they bring so the gate 50 is all about responsibility and, and and the energy about this the fear is that you're going to somehow let down the your family or somebody who you love 
um, by by doing something wrong when you have the gate 50. There can be some level of codependence in this energy. And the way to push through this energy is to know that people have responsibility for themselves and when they get older and you know they, they you just have to let people do what they have to do and you know hope for the best because eventually everybody has to have their own level of responsibility the gate 44 is all about patterns repeating themselves so it's all about the past so there could be a fear of the past repeating itself it could be all about patterns in life and how the patterns in life continue to repeat over and over again so a bad relationship could lead to a bad relationship but opening up to a new way of being or in new opportunities and new patterns coming into your life can help you push through the the fear in this in this gate as well the gate 44 is all about a connection to sales so the thing about the this energy is you might be really good at presenting things or making things beautiful so that they can be sold so you could be somebody who does um, like they do the things where they do up the houses before they sell them or interior design or a lot of things where you're actually making things beautiful for sale and then the gate 26 connects to it and that's where the sale energy comes in there could be a real strong sense of smell with this energy as well that's something that's very common the gate 57 is all about the fear of the future and fear that the future will will bring things that you you don't want to happen again this is all about pushing through that energy and understanding that the the fears that you have about the future may not necessarily be true because in fact we don't always know exactly what's coming to us in the future although there is a tremendous amount of um, intuition in this energy and there is an ability to have some level of psychic energy to to actually do to predict the future the other concept is that usually somebody with the gate 57 can hear a lie in somebody's voice the gate 48 is all about logic and patterns it is about getting to the depth of things there is some level of inadequacy with this energy because you don't always feel that you have all the information that you need you don't feel that you have enough of of anything to to support yourself when you when you need to get information your the question is do you have all the information you need the thing about this energy is that to know that you do have the energy of of knowing what what you need to have in the time you need it the thing about the energy of the 48 is that it comes in when you don't think you have the energy or you don't think you have the the information nine out of ten times because you have this energy already and you like to get to the depth of things and you like to make sure you know all the boxes are checked and everything is 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 researched and checked out you you will probably know it it will just come at that time when you need it and if you just rest in the idea that you will have the answers when you need it then you can push through the energy of not knowing enough or or feeling inadequate or feeling like you're not ready to take the next step in your life the gate 18 is all about perfection and it is all all about trying to be perfect and trying to get that perfect image it could be of your body it could be of your of your relationship it could be of pretty much anything a career there is no level of real perfection in the world because we are we are beautifully imperfect and that's kind of who we are as humanity when we understand that our imperfections are are just a part of who we are and they don't define who we are we can also look at the whole concept of of the wabi-sabi or the imperfection is perfect in our in our world because again it is showing that we we can be imperfect but we can still survive and knowing that is something that you can push through and understand that you can do as many treatments beauty treatments or you can you know be as fit as you can be in the gym or whatever but ultimately there is no level of perfection that we can ever achieve and when you see that you'll see that it doesn't matter perfection no longer matters what matters is that you're yourself and you you embody who you are and you can Embrace those parts of you that you may feel are imperfect and know that they're part of you. And by being part of you, they're exactly the way they're meant to be. The gate 28 is all about the search for the meaning of life. There could be a lot of struggle in this energy and this uh, this feeling that life has no meaning and, you know, we're just kind of walking around and, you know, we do our thing and then eventually we die. But if you look at the concept of, and the fear could be here with the fear of death. The concept here is that if you look at your life and understand that each each moment that we're out there doing our thing, we are actually learning something. We are bringing something new to the table. There is always going to be some speck of understanding and what life means. Every once in a while, will anybody with this energy will get that. 
And when you can when you can string all those specs together and you'll have like a string of, of gems so that you'll have some concept of the meaning of your life and know that, that nothing is in vain and we all have purpose in this in this incarnation. The other concept with the gate 28 is all about this idea that as soon as someone tells you you can't do something, you want to do it all the more. And there's this way of pulling into pulling into your life, the opportunities or the things that are going to be the hardest to do. And because of that, it's almost like you want to struggle with them. But when you realize the struggle isn't necessary and that you can you can do those difficult tasks, but do the difficult tasks that matter to you and leave the rest behind so that life is not a permanent struggle. The gate 32 is all about endurance and it is all about being ambitious in, in life and trying to uh, get, it, it does really work into this concept of um, abundance and resources and making money. There's a lot of business energy in this and it is about being um, good enough at your job and having all the things you want and, and getting all those high dreams and ambitions and being able to reach those goals. And sometimes there's this fear that you will never reach your goals. You'll never really get ahead. You'll never really go to the places where you want to go and understanding that every day you're stepping one foot in front of the other you're doing the best you can you're trying and every time you try you're going to get one step ahead and move forward in into the the place you want to go the goals the dreams the ambition the place that you want to eventually end up in going and and the whole concept with this is not to get lost in the concept of just always trying to be ahead 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 because this energy can easily turn into something more of a greedy energy where you just basically don't care who you have to step over all the end all that matters is the end product and that you get your end product but always keeping in mind that ambition is is wonderful and it can get us ahead in life and it can make us see dreams that we never thought possible but that ambition that comes where we have somebody at the end of it some people who are cheering us along to the finish line because this is tribal energy and so it means that it is all about the tribe so when we have this integrity in this ambition and we and we take the right route the right path and and we don't have to cut corners and and cut in front of people just to get what we want we'll have our goals met but we'll also have that feeling that we we did it just the way we needed to do it and we did it in the right way and that completes the spleen so let's move on to the sacral center so if you've been following all along and you've gone through part one and part two, I've talked a lot about the sacral center. And as far as the sacral center goes, I mean, this literally is, is the, the center that determines a type in human design. So, and because of that, it's going to be extremely important. We have talked a lot about the sacral energy. We have talked about, um, you know, being burnt out and running on other people's energy when we're talking about, you know, you know, open centers and and that kind of stuff and and it does really happen to be important when it comes to the sacral center because you have almost 70 percent of the population that are generator types which means they have a defined sacral or a constant battery of energy that they always have available whenever they need it and then you have the undefined sacral energy um, people who are the projectors as well as the manifestors and also the reflectors so because there's so much of this generator energy or this this sacral energy and this battery that's just like an ever ready battery, battery that's always going, 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 it's very easy for somebody who is a projector or somebody who is a manifest or even a reflector to go on the energy of the sacral and to and to actually be out there trying to perform like a generator type thinking that they have all this energy and that you know they'll always have it whenever they need it not understanding that it's transient this is transient energy that comes and goes based on every open center so when we're talking about a uh, defined sacral we're talking about all the center for workforce energy this is for life force energy this is for rearing children this is for procreation this is for all the things we do to continue on a, on as a human race so it's it's the most powerful powerful of all motors in the human design system so by by every stretch of the imagination the sacral center is is going to have a huge impact on the world so let's look a little bit more as at the difference between the defined and the undefined sacrals so when you have a defined sacral you're always going to be a generator or a manifesting generator so that means that you're going to have an infinite amount of battery energy or you have an, as much energy as you need. The whole thing about when you have a defined sacral is 
In order for you to get a good night's sleep, you need to burn that energy off. You need to be busy all day, do all the things you need to do. And then at the end of the day, that way you have a nice sleep and then you wake up again and you have a brand new full battery ready to go again. There's always this constant supply of energy that's always ready to be burnt every day. Yes, there's absolutely a possibility that generator types can burn themselves out. And that's somebody who would be a generator type who has a will center or somebody with a 3420. There are ways that you can actually burn out your energy by overdoing it. So that doesn't mean that because you have this, you know, hugely power ba powerful battery, and this ability to have this endless amount of energy whenever you need it, that, you know, basically you are invincible. At the end of the day, we're all human and we need to honor that and that will help with this whole burnout concept. So it can actually happen to generator types that they actually do get burnt out. But as far as burnout goes, it's probably a lot more common for somebody who is a manifester or a projector to, to become burnt out. And that's because of this undefined sacral where they're always you know, taking all the energy in from all the generator types. And, you know, again, using the energy instead of, instead of allowing it to use you is a way that people with an open sacral can get through life and get through life in a way that they don't have to be burnt out. If they continue to use the energy as though it's an endless supply and it's their supply and it's not, it's not a transient type of thing, burnout definitely can be a possibility, like I said. Especially if somebody who has uh, an open sacral has a will, will center, which is defined, which can push people to beyond their capability, beyond their limits, and then bang, before you know it, you have this whole burnout thing where you just can't even get out of bed in the morning. But knowing that the energy comes and then the energy goes and to use the energy as you need to use it and then understanding that you'll need rest afterwards when you have an open sacral is the way that's going to make things work for you in a way that you're not going to burn yourself out and you're using it the way it needs to be used. As far as sleep goes, somebody with an open sacral, it's better for you to go to bed before you actually feel tired. This all goes back to the concept of releasing all the energy that you picked up, the sacral energy that you picked up in the, in the run of a day. And then once that's released, then you can actually settle in to go to bed. Now, there is a theory that if you are somebody who has an open sacral, it's it may be more difficult for you to sleep with somebody who has a defiant sacral because the battery energy is always revving you up and, and, and you don't really have that ability to, to settle in. Whether that is a case or not, I mean, that's something everybody has to experiment with in their life and understand that everybody's set up different and this may be the case for some people and maybe it's, it's not necessarily the case for others. Some people with open sacral find that, that certain transits that will define their sacral, um, the electromagnetics of the planets or certain relationships can make them revved up and, and have more of this energy and, and more potential to get exhausted after it starts to dissipate and not being able to sleep as, as they normally would because they're not used to always having this energy buzzing along all the time when that's not usually part of their design. So knowing what your energy is like and knowing how it can be used is the most important part of using the sacral in a way that is going to have you living your best life and you're not burning yourself out and you're getting to get done the things you want to get done. So again, it's about using the energy when you have it, using it for the things you need to use it for, and then taking the energy and understanding that, okay, this is it. I'm done with it. Now I have to have my rest and I need to do what I need to do so that I'm always going to protect my energy to, so that I know that I'm not going to get burnt out. So let's talk briefly about the sacral gates and we'll finish up this center. So when we're talking about the gate 34, we're talking about the gate of power and this does come with a level of power and it, it is can be a lot about this uh, power that you exude or this this feeling of people saying, wow, that person really has like a strong energy or or this presence about them. It does hook into the power and charisma, the 3420, and that would be considered the most powerful, probably one of the most powerful channels in human design. The gate 27 is all about caring. This hooks into the gate 50 and this is part of the tribal or the defense circuit. And it really is about this concept of caring for your, your family, taking care of your, your kids, taking care of your whoever matters to you. There could be a lot of health professionals who have this kind of energy. The one thing about this energy is this can be a codependent energy and it's, it is about caring for yourself as much as it's caring for everybody else. 
The gate 42 is all about the closer. This is the energy that comes in and finishes off a project that started. It's a cyclical energy and hooks in with the gate 53 that is in the root. The gate 53 is all about beginnings and the gate 42 is all about closing it out, shifting up into a new energy, shifting into a new cycle. The thing about this energy is if you only have one of these gates or you have two of the gates of 53, 42, remember that everything comes in cycles and that if you want to, if you want to take on a new project or do something new or close something, uh, everything that you do comes in a cycle and it's like being on a treadmill and you don't get off that treadmill or you don't get out of that cycle until that program stops. So it's something to keep in mind. The gate three is difficult in the beginning. This is all about mutative energy and bringing new and innovative ideas into the into the collective or into the world. It's an individual energy. So it is about this individual need to bring something new into the world. And if you can imagine that gate three is all about a seed and you need all the perfect conditions for that seed to sprout and that seed to sort of take root and grow. So that's what it means when it's difficult in the beginning. It has to have all the right circumstances for something new to be brought into the world. The gate nine is focus on detail and it is about having this real hyper focus on a lot of things. You can see all the small details sometimes, but you don't see the big picture if this is only a hanging gate on its own. So there could be um, an imbalance between hyper focusing on things, but not seeing that the big picture of things. Sometimes people say that this energy is connected to uh, ADHD or attention deficit, but if anything, it's attention hyper focus and and it's hyper attention so at the cost of the rest of the world you focus on something that may not be necessarily what you're meant to look at like if you're in school and you're meant to look at what the teacher's talking about and you're looking outside then that could be considered something where you're not focusing but you actually are focusing but you're focusing on the on what people might consider the wrong thing and so there is some great amount of um energy here where you can actually do a lot of work on changing things. A lot of athletes have this energy too because they're able to focus on all the little things that that change their strategy or change the way they shoot a ball or the way they do their sports. So there is a lot of positive energy in here as long as you can learn how to use the energy. The gate 59 is all about intimacy and breaking barriers. This is about tribal energy as well and it's part of the defense circuit it is about meeting and coming together to to procreate to have um, children it's not necessarily taking care of the children but it is the intimacy that comes before that but you can also have this energy of breaking barriers and um, showing people that they're not as different as, as as they seem to think they are this intimacy could it doesn't always have to be sexual. It could be for projects, for um, partnerships or things that you need to get together to, you know, put your heads together so you can bring something out of it. Gate 29 is all about devotion and it is about trans transmitting or transforming energy from a lower level to a higher level. It can do that. There is this level of having to have a good passion or a passionate um, belief or a, a passion for something you're going to do. So if you have a career, then having a passion to have that, do that career, to do that thing you want to do makes it all the more beneficial and it all the more successful because the passion is, is something that sort of flicks on a switch and it brings this natural sense of, of luck and being at the right place at the right time and this perseverance and this commitment and being able to get something done or having the endurance to get to the end of the line and continue on with it until you reach the goals that you've set for yourself. The gate 14 is all about natural luck. Anybody who carries this energy is generally somebody who has more opportunity to win the lottery or have lucky events happen or things out of the blue. But again, you have to remember that it connects to the gate two and that's all about magnetic monopole so you can imagine that the the luck is related to the love of how how you feel about yourself we did talk about the um the identity center or the g center and so the luck can be connected to this whole concept of who you are and how you feel about yourself the luck can come with the idea of making money but if it doesn't have the connection to the gate too there could be this energy of spending more money than you actually make. So you can always make the money, but you may spend more than you actually have. There is an ability to collect a lot of things, have a lot of things that that just kind of show up in your in your world, that you have a lot of possessions that have value. And that is everything for the sacral center. And let's move on to the final center, the root center.
So the energy of the root center is, this is the second pressure center. We talked about the first pressure center being the head center. And this is the other pressure center, which is the root center. So it kind of makes sense. So we have the top of the body graph and the bottom of the body graph. And they're both pr pressure centers because there's pressure to figure things out with the head and there's pressure to do with the root. So the energy of, of the root center is all about adrenaline energy. It's where it's produced. Everything that comes with a root center is all about a pulse energy. So when you have a defined root, you have a pulse. And what that means is that you have a time when it's almost like a switch is flicked on, when the pulse is on, and when the pulse is off, the switch flicks off. So somebody with a defined root can't, may have more difficulty trying to push themselves through something. So in other words, if they have a project that they have to, to finish, but their pulse has been shut off, or it's just not on at that at that particular time it could be really hard to get that project finished so that's the thing about the the pulse energy and the defined root the root is defined it can be defined through the spleen or it could be defined through the um the emotional center or the solar plexus or it could also be defined through the sacral and each one has a different way of sort of affecting the pulse so if we think about the emotional center uh, being defined through the emotional center, well then the emotions can affect the pulse or the emotional wave can affect the pulse, which means if somebody is having a certain part of their wave and for instance, maybe they're on the downside of their wave and they just don't don't feel like they're like they're at the top of the game and they just want to spend some time alone and do what they want to do, they may have a hard time trying to get things done as well because they're all connected and the pulse might for the, the um, root center might turn off at the same time. Now, when we're talking about the uh, 53, 60, and the 52, the one coming from the safe girl, those are all considered what's called format energy. So their format energy is always something that they say is, is it affects all the energy of the body graph. It's way down in the root center, but it does affect the energy of the body graph. And, and it's not just these three gates, it would be the whole channel. So if you have the 53, 42, the 63, or the 52, nine, all of these energies are going to affect the whole body graph in that they, they are format energy. They have a lot of, um, for instance, the 42, 53 is all about cycles. The 360 is all about bringing mutative energy into the world. And the 52, nine, 52 is all about focusing so that energy is all about format energy so very powerful energy that affects the whole being that comes from the pulses um, within the and they all come if you can imagine because it is hooked into the root center they all come in a pulse so everything that I'm talking about is coming in a pulse energy and we also have the root center that's going to be defined through the, the uh, spleen and then this could be about the pulses of having um, your intuition sort of turn on and turn off. It could be pulses of having fears turn on and turn off and timing of things turning on and turning off. And the spleen is all about the energy of now. And then we have this pulse energy. So the energy is pulsing now every once in a while, and then it stops pulsing. And so you, the spleen might sort of get hits based on the pulse of, of whatever you have in your specific design. So let's talk a little bit more about what it's like to have an undefined root. I've already talked a lot about the defined root, but it is, it is this concept of right timing. So when you're getting your work done or when you're doing stuff, it is about the right timing when it feels right for you. So, you know, it's all related to your pulse and when your pulse co goes on and when your pulse goes off and you'll feel it, you'll know, oh, I don't feel like doing any, doing anything or I do feel like doing, you know, something and, and you'll know that that's generally something that most people who have a pulse are, are quite aware of. When you have an open root, this is that's why it's called a pressure center because when you have an open root, there's always this concept that you need to finish what you finish something. As soon as you get a project, you want to finish that project. You don't want to wait around. You want to get it done. And there's always this urgency to get your to-do list done so that you can rest. But most times you finish your to-do list and there's always a new to-do list. So the concept is when you're always uh, running around trying to finish things, trying to get things done, trying to get that to-do list finished, the question you can ask yourself, is this really important? that I do this right now and what will happen if I don't do it right now most times it's like it's okay you can hold off you can take your time you can get things done when when you get things done and, and not always have this pressure to to finish it to get it done and to move on 
the other way that it can express itself when it's open is that you need a, a lot of pressure to eventually get something done so you get a project and you wait till the very last minute to get that done because you need that pressure to build up to actually push you forward to propel you into this concept that you need to get this energy um, this whole project completed because the energy has just got so strong and pressurized that there's there's nothing you can do other than act on it at that particular point People with an open route can also have this, um, in, they like adrenaline uh, energy and that could mean that they, they like to do uh, things that cause that spike in adrenaline, things that cause them to have that excitement or that energy or that, you know, that pulse of, of adrenaline, which could be things that are extreme sports or, or things that really get their blood pumping. They could like uh, roller coasters. They could like uh, coffee, anything that's kind of giving some sort of a hit or something that's going to bring their energy up or give them that shot of, of, uh, of adrenaline could be sugar, a lot of those kind of things that can can um, work into the open uh, energy. So the whole thing, as I said, is always about this idea of what needs to be done right now, what can wait till later, and not always feeling like you're compelled and pressurized to to move to get things done. So you're always like moving to the beat of that that pressure that you feel, and instead of doing that, just understanding that your your pressure is probably not as as much as you think it is and it's just this concept that when you start to work with the energy and understand that yeah this is this is energy that's coming from other people and it's not it's not something that i have to act on because when somebody with an open root is in contact or in the aura of somebody with a defined root there could be this pressure that they feel from the person with the defined root, although the person with the defined root may have no intention of pressurizing anybody at all, but there's just this inherent feeling of being pressured into doing something, even if it's not true. So remembering that the root center is a pressure center and when it's open, there will be this pressure to always get tasks done, to finish to-do lists and things like that and understanding what's important to finish and what can wait till later will will give much more ease with the use of this energy because it can be quite stressful to always be chasing that next list that you need to complete and when you find that piece it it gets a lot easier and you can find some times where rather than rushing around to do stuff that could probably wait till later you're actually sitting down and enjoying life so let's go through this the gates of the root center and we will actually be done with the centers so when we look at the gate 58 that hooks into the gate 18 and that whole channel is all about finding the perfection and the pattern and the find the 58 part of it is finding the joy and the perfection finding the joy in the, the pattern there's a lot of logic in this energy and it is about finding happiness in finding how things work and the pattern of things and people who have this energy it's all about um, being perfect there could be some corrective energy and just trying to get things right it's really helpful if like for instance there's a factory and there's there's all these sounds and somebody with that whole channel or even you know the 58 can hear something that's just not right or they can see the imperfection in something and the things that need to be corrected so it's it's a good thing in that when it's used like that it can not be so fun when somebody's always trying to correct other people but this is the joy part of it. This is the, the happy part of it. Just finding the, you know, the happiness after you've, you've figured out where the mistakes are and how they can be corrected. The gate 38 is all about the good fight. It's hooked into the gate 28. The gate 28 is a struggle, but you know, finding out what the good fight in life is, what's worth fighting for and what's better left to um, just left on its own. And using this energy in the, in the shadow side, you could be fighting all the things and fighting everybody you know, to your detriment. The gate 54 is all about ambition. This is about um, hooks into the gate 32. So this is about that endurance and pushing through, making things happen and, and always trying to get a little bit further in life and, and getting up that, stepping up that ladder. And always remembering though, when you get up that ladder, you wanna have people with you. So the, the, the ladder climbing that is always taking other people into consideration and knowing that it's not worth it to, to step over people or burn bridges as you get. Know, up up the ladder 
you'll have a better experience when you actually do meet your goals and ambitions. Again, this is all about business energy as well. Gate 53 is all about starting things and new things. Somebody who has this energy might like to start things a lot, but they may not necessarily like to come back and finish it. So the gate 42 comes in and finishes the energy. So this is about starting things, but not necessarily tending to them or taking care of them. The thing about this energy is it's cyclical. So once you start something, you're starting a new cycle and you're going to sort of have to be locked into that cycle until it's completed. So knowing what to start and knowing what to not start is is very helpful in the long run. Gate 60 is all about limitations. The limitations of what you can bring into into reality and that's hooked into the gate three which is all about the different difficult in the beginning so you have the difficult in the beginning but even when the mutation comes out when we have all the perfect circumstances we also have this limitation of how much this thing can grow how many mutative ideas can come into the being because if everything was mutative then it would be almost like it would be too much because not all mutative ideas are good for the collective ultimately it has to be good for humanity and or for everybody to sort of move forward in life the every mutative idea is not going to be the perfect idea for everybody every invention per se is not going to be an invention that's meant to to be in the world so that's where this limitation comes in and the whole thing about this limitation is that once you if you are in a limited area or you you live in a limited space or you have um you know like you live in a specific house or something like that once you get used to being limited in that house and you understand that you're okay with living in that house usually you upsize so it's it's always about this idea of once you get used to the limitation once you get comfortable with the limitation that's when you get an upgrade Gate 52 is all about that stillness and the focus. This is looking at the big picture. It's taking that nine energy because it's a 952, taking it together and, and putting it in a situation where the nine can sort of settle into it, figure out what needs to be figured out. And this this focus will now come in pulses when it's a full channel. The 52 is is can be about stillness. It can be about like people who like to do yoga, people who like to do meditation. So that's the kind of energy. It's like a more peaceful energy. And some people can call it the couch potato energy where people like to just kind of be very still. The gate 19 is to feel others more than you feel yourself. This hooks into the gate 49, the revolutionary energy, but this is a sensitive energy. There's a lot of sensitivity in this energy. People who have this energy are usually stepping into the oars of other people a lot. They can be um, very tactile. They love to be around people, to hold hands, to just be around people. There is a, a deep amount of sensitivity in this energy and people who carry this energy are sensitive to um, criticism. They're sensitive to being with other people who don't appreciate their energy. And it's all about remembering your own energy when you have the gate 19 and understand you're just as important as a person that you're in relationship with because sometimes they can get lost in the other person so much that they forget about their own needs and, and their own identity. The gate 39 is the provocation that, that comes with um, knowing that we are being taken care of by something that's bigger than us. We are being taken care of this whole concept of the gate 55. You know, if we if we believe in something bigger than ourselves, we'll be, you know, we'll be we'll be taken care of and the path will be shown to us. It can be all about provoking, it could be all about poking people and it could all be just about being the 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 clown or the person who likes to just provoke people just because it feels fun. The energy of the gate 41 is all about the fantasy. The fantasy is, it can be um, of a visionary or it could be of a dreamer. The visionary sees something, holds onto the idea when it comes together with the gate 30 and they push that new idea eventually when the timing is right. It can make its energy up to the throat because it's as far down as you can get in the body graph. When that energy gets to the throat, you can have these amazingly amazing magical energy that kind of comes into being so it's 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 these dreams manifest into reality there is uh, a lot of potential for writing in this energy as well so that is the gates of the root center and that completes the root center and that completes the centers so let's finish up this video and i'll have a final few comments and then we'll be done so when we went through the centers i talked a lot about the gates as well but what I have next is just going to be some slides or some PDFs that I made and they have the body graph and all the keywords and where they're found on the body graph. So keywords for all the different gates. I do also have some lists of the gates with extra keywords. So there's even more information. You can do like a screenshot of that if you want. 
And then after that, I have all the channels. And with the channels, I also have keywords. So again, this is all more information that you can use for your own references. And you can use that to help um, read your, your human design body graph. And then I'm just going to have a little music with that when the, the um, slides go through. And We'll have one more video after this video. It'll be part four. And in part four, what I'm going to do is talk about the planets, talk about what they mean and how to read them in your chart. I also will have some um, more slides about the planets. And at the very end, I will also talk about the lines of each particular gate so that you kind of have a little bit of the flavor of what, what it means to have a gate in a particular line. And the last thing I'm going to do is just an example. I'm just going to do a chart and I'm going to use um, all the different things that I've taught taught so far. And I'm just going to go through a chart just to show you how you could do it systemically so that you can go from top to bottom and go from the, the um, sort of the, the like not as specific to get into the specific. So we'll read a chart from top to bottom just to see what the practice looks like. So I will see you then.